Yo, what's good guys? This is Theo here, and in this video we are going to build a very basic uh, counter application with uh, Redux. Uh, so as Redux sort of describes here, it's a predictable state container. And basically what uh, the idea is behind uh, Redux is that it's sort of a design pattern. Uh, well, it, it is a design pattern that uh, basically what, what it does is you'll have this sort of main uh, container, which is known as a store. And, and uh, in order to sort of change any state in your application, you, you need to sort of dispatch uh, or send off an event that uh, the store will handle, well, Redux will handle behind the scenes. And depending on the type, um, it will, you know, take the payload of, uh, of the event and update the state. So in a way you're sort of, you know, creating that one source of truth by having this central uh, delegate of, of state. And so if you don't really understand what I'm saying, that's the purpose of this video. We're gonna build out a simple counter application that's gonna increment and decrement. So um, literally, been looking at the docs for about a day or so so let's see if I can get this from scratch very simple application I'm not trying to brag or anything um, so let me just make a directory called simple redux actually what we want to do here I'm gonna use so normally I like to build stuff from scratch but I don't want to do that here so I'm gonna say react create or sorry it's a create react app and then we're gonna give it a name we're gonna say simple Redux counter. And what this is going to do is Facebook already has a boilerplate code for React that is going to you know set us up a Webpack dev server. It's going to use Yarn to uh, install everything that we need, ESLint, Webpack, Babel, uh, React. We're just going to need to install Redux. And basically it already loads you up with a server and a component. So this is Yarn. It's another package manager. Um, it's actually supposed to be a lot faster than NPM. I'm not sure exactly why, but I think it has to do with how the de dependencies are installed and it sort of caches uh, the dependencies so it doesn't have to go through that recursion that NPM uses. So I think it takes a while the first time, but after that I've seen it, you know, run what would take NPM, you know, about, I don't know, 30 seconds. I see Yarn do it in about three or four seconds, so it's, it's really fast. So it's grabbing a lot of stuff right now. Um, so it does a little bit of the heavy lifting up front and you can sort of see everything that it has installed for us, Uglify.js. Uh, what else do we have here? Can't say we're gonna use a lot of this stuff. Um, post CSS, Lodash. So we have a lot of stuff, JSON loader. We have a lot of sort of loaders in here already and we've got our Babel set up, so that's nice. If you just want to get started and start writing some code, this is definitely a good option, but I still think it's really important to understand Webpack, to understand how to set up your Babel RC, to get all of your paths resolved, and basically just get started with React on your own without having to rely on a uh, boilerplate or sort of a scaffold like this. All right, so just about done here, and there it is. It's building our packages, and it sort of shows you how to run everything. So if we if we go into the simple Redux container and we type, I'm gonna open this up first actually. I'm gonna open it up with Sublime and we're gonna get rid of this. This is what I was building before. That's what we're gonna build. Um, and if I run uh, yarn start, what's gonna happen? It's going to fire up the simple express server. Here it is, localhost 3000 and let it refresh and it already has a simple application component for us and then it tells you if you want to uh, get started edit that file and what's cool about this actually is it has a hot reload for the hot module reload so i can sort of show this to you guys in here what that what i mean by that is let's see if i'm going to bring this a little bit further off the side um, okay so let me, oops, I guess that's good. Okay, so what I mean by that is if we come in here to our source, our app.js, 
say welcome to React Yo. Watch, it will update the bindings and everything. It's going to refresh itself. And it should have done that. Yeah, there you go. It's going to kick in. Say yo. Let's save it. There you go. So you have that hot reload. Um, all right. So we don't actually want really any of this in here um, in our render method. I don't really care about that. The only thing that I'm probably going to leave in here is our div. I'm just going to say um, simple redux counter in here. And I'm going to go ahead and save that. Let it update. There it is, simple Redux counter. We've got our nice uh, sort of ES lint going on here. I'm pretty sure that's ES lint. That's what we're getting. Uh, that's pretty cool. And then we can sort of see, yeah, we're getting ES lint in here as well. It's a warning. So it's it's really nice. A lot of the stuff it's got sent, set up for you. Um, what I'm going to actually do, guys, is I am going to I'm gonna build, build it all into one file here but um, you don't have to. So let me go ahead and open up another terminal and I'll change directories into there. Like I said, we, we need to install Redux. So I'm gonna do yarn add Redux, it's, it's equivalent to npm install. And it's linking the dependencies, it's grabbing them from the npm registry and should be done fairly soon. Like I said, the initial heavy lifting is what takes yarn a little while, but after that, it's a lot faster than npm I found. Okay, there we go, we got Redux. Um, so let me sort of explain this yeah, to you guys. So let, let me create our UI right here, and it's super simple guys. It's This is a very basic um, example. We're just gonna have two buttons here, and let me change this to Babel and JavaScript. And this button is just going to say increment and to sort of go the opposite way in terms of functionality, we just want to create another button that says decrement. It's going to compile. We got our two buttons right there. Obviously, nothing's going to happen right now, but I'm going to sort of show you how uh, the, the flow would go in this, right? So the first thing that I want to do, I want to go ahead and import. We don't need that logo anymore. Um, I want to import what's called this method called create store, and we get this from Redux. Okay, so what you pass to this is what's known as a reducer, and basically a reducer is just a function that we're going to write that is going to have a simple switch statement inside of it, and it's going to look at you know the type of event you've emitted and the payload, and it's going to sort of respond with respond accordingly and uh, you know, apply these changes to your store, and you're gonna, in order to send these actions, you're not only gonna have to build a method, but on top of that, you're going to have to um, dispatch events to your store because, again, your store, your store is your main source of truth. So I could see some of you saying, you know, this is a bit ridiculous for such a small application, and yes, you're right. In a simple counter application, there's really no re reason to do this, but I want to show you guys how. And we'll talk about later on in future tutorials, you know, why you'd want to use this. And again, it goes back to that simple source of truth. Okay. So uh, what I'm going to do here, guys, is create this method. Um, and basically, it's going to be called root reducer. And you can call it whatever you want. Basically, all it is is just a regular JavaScript method. And what it's going to take in, it's going to take in a state which is the state of the store, the state of the reducer at that point. It's also gonna take in a type, okay? Um, or sorry, not a type, it's gonna take in an action. You know, what kind of event has it been emitted? So what we can do here, guys, is we can create this simple switch statement. This is what the docs recommends, but you know, I'm sure there's other ways to do it. Uh, and we can switch on the case of um, the action dot type, right? So we can switch on the payload, basically what we're being sent from our component. And here we can say, you know, the case of, you know, add one, that's gonna be the first case. Uh, what we wanna do is we want to return state dot concat, uh, or, or sorry, not, uh, let, me, let me think what I wanna do. Return state dot concat, 
added one. And because we're using ES6, I'm gonna use the default parameters. I'm gonna declare our state as an empty array. So this is basically going to um, basically push onto the state. I tried it with push before. I don't know too much about it. I'm guessing push is, is not allowed because in a way you are mutating the state, whereas concat, you're not necessarily mutating it like push, but uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie about that one, I'm not necessarily sure. So we're, we use state here as an array. If you do wanna use it as an object, what you would do is, say you had your object in here, right? What you wanna do, because you don't wanna mutate your state, because you wanna, you know, you really just wanna have a clean object every time, and you wanna have that one source of truth, you can do object.assign, and what this does, you can pass it an empty object, give you a fresh copy, the object that uh, we are passing from, which in this case, it's gonna be the state, and then third is, you know, what, what the payload is, what you're grabbing from it. But because we're not doing that, I'm gonna go back to what I have here, and state.concat added one, okay. And then we're gonna add our second one, which is going to be subtract one, that's our second case. And here we're gonna do return state dot concat subtract one. So we're just sort of keeping track of all of our events in Redux in the store. And finally, we're gonna create a default case. And basically, you know, in case this um, gets hit, we're just gonna return the state. So that's good in all. So saying create store is not used. So we're getting close to using our store. Uh, what I actually wanna do, I wanna create our store here. I'm gonna say let store, we use create store, and here we're gonna pass it our root producer. And let's save this, make sure we don't get any errors here. Okay, so we have our store. And the way that I bring it in, and again, I'm very new to JSX, React, Redux, less than a week, but I'm gonna use this constructor that the ES6 class gives us. And I first have to call super on it because uh, this application is extending from this base class. So first we need to create this so that we have the this context. And after that, what I'm gonna do, I'm going to call store.subscribe, okay? And what this is going to do, this is gonna give me any updates that happen to the store, um, basically when, um, when um, any events are dispatched. So I'm gonna say store.get get state. And we make sure we don't have any errors here. Let's hope not. All right, cool, no errors. Um, so finally, what I wanna do, I wanna add some methods. So I'm gonna wire up an on click event. So I'm gonna say this dot increment. Uh, well, I haven't written my, my methods yet, but I will in just a second. So we're actually gonna get an error because we have not defined that method in our, in our component. So let me write these and we'll see what error we get now. No, we don't get an error, but I think we click it. No, no, no error yet. All right. So let me go ahead and let's see what happens if I just say increment. I should get an error though. Yeah, okay, increment is not defined. All right, um, this dot increment. Let me build this method out. Okay, so I'm gonna say increment. And all we're gonna do in here uh, we're not really taking a payload because we sort of have our have ours hard coded. Uh, you can change it, and the way that you can do this is we're going to say store dot dispatch, and we're going to pass in uh, this object, which the type is going to be increment. Okay, and then the next parameter would be your payload, right? That's your that's your actual um, data that you're going to pass. So let me just make sure we're in the store. In store increment method. And let me save that. Okay, let's try it out. Let's click increment. There we go. We're in store increment method. And here we have an object. And it's dispatched. Return store.get state. Store.subscribe. Um, hold on, let me see. 
story that subscribe console.live subscribing to store I think I missed one thing here guys subscribing to store so it's gonna happen on the very first one and let's see wait two minutes but it's still an object store.concat Oh, sorry, because it's an object. I need to change this to an array. All right, my bad. So we're going to subscribe, and we're getting an empty array, and we're still getting an empty array. Why is that? State.concat added one. Let me see. Let me see. Um, state. State dot um, data. So let me try this now. Let me change this to type. The data is added one. Let's refresh this. Increment. And we're still getting an empty array. Why is that? State is an empty array. All right. Let me go back and check this out real quick. Store state of cat action dot text. Oh, right, we need to actually concatenate an array on there. Okay, so what we need to do is change this to state dot data and yeah, they have it like that. State of cat create stores store dot dispatch type. So, like store dot state. All right, try this again, increment. We're still seeing an empty store. Why is that? Store dot get state. Store dot store equals create store. Store dot reducer. Oh, right. My bad, guys. We're actually sorry about that. It was not something I was doing wrong. It, well, it was, but it wasn't part of Redux. It's my own mistake. So we gave it the wrong uh, action type. So we're getting undefined, undefined. And why is that? So let me think. State.data. If we're passing along sort.dispatch, type is text, and data is read the docs action.text, oh sorry, it's not state.data, it's action. The action is the payload. I might rename that to payload later on. So here we're adding one, Keep get it. we keep getting that, we're getting our store. So finally, let's build out our decrement method. And this is going to be a very similar method. And what we're gonna do here is just do subtract one and change this to subtracted one and with that it should work for us except for I need to change this to update it with the action dot data all right so finally our application should work so here we're incrementing we're subscribed to the store and let's decrement and why did decrement not work subtract one. oh my bad subtract one okay so Increment and decrement. There we go. Our full Redux counter is working. So that was it, guys. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed that. If you did, make sure to like, comment, and please subscribe and support the channel. It means a lot. So thanks for watching, guys, and have a great day. Take care. See you in the next video.